everybody, it's Leanne here. Welcome back to another video. It's a nice, crisp, freezing cold morning in Scotland here. It looks deceivingly nice, but it's actually below freezing right now. And I thought I would start my video with just a little peek of my back garden before we move on to this project. We are making some desk Christmas trees or table Christmas trees. These can be used on a shelf, as a place setting on a table, or just as something cute to sit on the windowsill and they're incredibly easy to make. I've made a few here in different sort of colours and designs for you to see how customisable they are. I've also did one with a different base to show you two versions of how to make this tree. This one here is my favourite. This one actually sold around the edges rather than glued it. And this one here is a bit more rustic and I actually used a hessian bag to cover this one. This one's for my haul. Okay, so what you will need. These little bases I actually got from eBay, they came with little blackboard stands. But I know these might not be easy to get, I will link the little stands that I got. So I have two methods in this video to make these trees. You'll need some scrap cardboard, preferably quite thick cardboard so you don't have to layer it as much. And an assortment of buttons or embellishments that you want to use on your tree. I have some wooden ones here which have been mod podged and glittered on one side and I have some random colours of just little buttons. I also have here the hessian from the bag I cut up and I have some self adhesive glitter craft foam. This is really easy to get in most places and it is extremely cheap. Comes in a range of colours and I absolutely love self adhesive craft foam. I have some felt here in different colours of green. Once again, really easy to find and relatively cheap. Most people have some in their craft stash somewhere. And this is children's craft foam and this is actually the self-adhesive type. I find for projects like this, the self-adhesive type is actually far better for the things I want to do with it, less messy. And it also comes in a range of colours and all these links as usual will be in the blog post and the link in the description below. Now here I have a choice of sticks to show you can use anything here. I have some disposable chopsticks a wooden rod, some fancier chopsticks and a barbecue skewer. I'm actually using these disposable chopsticks for this project as I got a whole bunch of them on eBay. Something like 25 sets of chopsticks for only a couple of pounds. They came packaged like this, 25 sets of them and in each package there's two of these really lightweight little chopsticks so I'm going to be using one of these for this project. Now as I said, it might be quite difficult for you to get the little wooden bases, so later in this project I'm going to be showing you how you can use cardboard to make the base and it's quite simple as this. You take some cardboard, you cut it to the rectangle shape and size that you want your base to be. Depending on the thickness of your card, you're going to cut out several of them and stack them. Just showing you here, I'm using up all these scrap bits of card that I had lying on my desk. And once you have quite a few and make it the thickness you want, obviously I make mine a lot thicker because the thicker the base, the more stable your tree is going to be. You're just going to poke a hole right through the middle of most of them, just leave one aside for the very bottom. I used a knitting needle here but you can use a pencil, a pen, or something like a barbecue skewer to pierce through them. And you do that with all your layers minus the bottom one. But we're going to be using this wooden stand for this first tree. So I'm going to get on with this. This is method one. Now my daughter asked me to make her a tree in a colour scheme that goes with her favourite band, which is Pentatonix, their new album release. So this tree is going to be a little wacky in the colour scheme, but that's purely because my daughter asked me to make this tree for her. It's going to be quite a large one and I'm going to show you how you can add a little more detail than the plain ones that I've made already. First of all, I'm going to cut out the desired size of my tree. Pretty self-explanatory, you just cut yourself an elongated triangle. Then you use it as a template to cut two more pieces of your craft card. Just cut 
cut my third piece there. Now depending on the thickness of your card, you might need more than three layers. You really just want enough layers that your stick nestles between your card comfortably without causing any bulges, but it doesn't really matter. Now I'm going to take the piece that goes in the centre and I'm going to just mark out where my stick is going to go. You want your stick to go quite far into your tree as it offers more stability once it's actually put together. And you're just going to cut channel for the stick to sit. This just makes it easier and flatter when you come to glue your pieces together. Now I made my previous trees using just PVA glue to glue them together but for the video I decided to go with hot glue and it works just as well. So I'm hot gluing these. It's a lot quicker but you do have to be careful if you use a hot glue gun. I've had many hot glue burns. And you're going to glue your middle piece to the first side and then you're going to glue that channel down the middle and insert your stick. Now when I hot glue a stick in like this, I like to roll the stick in the glue and it just holds it a lot more firmly and actually cools the glue down a lot quicker. And then you're going to glue your other piece of cardboard straight to that. And this is the basic shape for your tree and you don't have to do this with a tree. You could do the any shape. You could cut out a Santa Claus or a snowman. I think a snowman would be kind of cute. You're going to measure out the felt that you need. Now if you're gluing it like I'm going to be doing with this tree, you need to leave yourself a little bit of a border. And this is just so when you come to gluing the edges together, you have that little bit extra fabric that it meets. If you're going to be sewing the edges like I did on my green one, you don't need quite as thick a border. Now you'll need one piece of felt for each side of your tree. And then I'm actually going to use tacky glue to attach these just so that I have that few seconds being able to move it around because I want it even on both sides whereas hot glue once it's stuck on it's kind of stuck there so I'm just using a little bit of this Hobbycraft tacky glue to stick the felt on in this stage just so I can maneuver it to the middle when I turn it over and I'm just applying it at the other side as well. Now you can glue all the way around all your edges on your trees but I actually kind of like the look of the bottom of the tree being open so I'm only going to do the sides and because it's hot glue and sometimes hot glue can take a few minutes to cool down enough to grab I'm using just a little paper clip thing here to help me keep the felt together as I work the two edges in towards each other and you can also use this clip to go along as cooling just to force the glue into the cardboard and make a really neat edge. I didn't leave myself as much fabric on this side so I struggled a little bit with the clip and had to keep moving it but I did get there in the end so make sure you leave yourself ample fabric on both sides to be able to pull in and cover the thickness of hard that you have used. And I'm just leaving those clips for a second to let the glue cool down so it doesn't open up and once it's pretty much stuck I take the clips off again. You can trim away any untidiness once your pieces are glued together and neaten everything up. Now it's fine to decorate your tree from this sort of stage. I've done it here with the green one. I sewed the edges of that tree and immediately went on and stuck everything on. But for this one I'm going to be a little bit fancier and show you how you can give a little sort of leaf effect, tiered leaves. I'm going to take some of that same white felt and figure out how many little scallops I want to be on my tree. I figured out four would be pretty cute. So to make them all done, I'm going to cut myself a strip that is the width of the tree and I'm going to fold my piece in half and then in half again and just cut a little arc off the end of one piece and that will give me uh, the symmetry of them all being the same. And I'm going to do one for each side. You don't need to do both sides of your tree if it's going to sit on a shelf or be seen only from one side. But I want to show you that it's just as easy to do both sides as it is to do one when you're doing things like this. I'm just going to hot glue them on 
I'm not going to trim it just yet. I want it to extend past my tree so I give myself enough material at the edges that I can trim it off and get it all nice and neat in the width of the tree when I'm done. I'm going to glue my edges together. It doesn't matter if your glue comes past where the edge of the tree is because hot glue is quite easy to cut through and it actually keeps the ends together better if you do go past the edges of the tree. I am going to trim that off. I'm just neatening up any bits you can see from the front. And then I'm just going to repeat this stage with strips. Now when it comes to doing these little strips, they're depending on the thickness of your strips will depend on how many little layers you have on your tree. Now if you do them as thin as this it's going to take quite a few to get to the top of the tree and it's going to have a really nice really layered effect. It's going to look really cute. As you can see I'm just attaching these and showing you what the thinner strips looks like. But if you want this project to go a bit faster and make less strips you merely have to make sure your strips are a bit and I will show you that in a moment. I'm just cutting out all these thin ones. And as you can see with the thin strips, they have to be quite close together and overlap to cover the seam of the previous strip. So if you think that is too much hassle, you can do it the way I'm going to do it now, which is the much quicker version, is where you cut yourself wider strips. And just like before, you fold them in half and fold them in half again and then cut your little arc on the bottom. And this is going to enable you to cover the whole tree in only two or three of these strips. And you can add these thinner ones as you go if you don't feel that you've got enough layers. It's completely up to you how thick you make this, how many layers you add. I think it would also be cute if you got yourself some scalloped lace and could use lace up, up, up on your tree. It would be like a really cute shabby chic vintage looking tree. I might actually make a shabby chic one in a later video. So I'm just laying up my little scallops and for that top one I only folded my felt into three pieces just so that they would be a little bit smaller than the other scallops on the tree and now I'm just gluing them one by one in place. You want them to extend past the edges of your tree so that you've got plenty to glue together and then trim off when you are done. I'm just gluing them on here. Now as you can see that only took about, if I'd have used a thicker strip on the very bottom one too, it would have only took two or three, sorry three or four to cover the whole tree. I covered it in four. I could have got away with three if I'd have made that bottom one thicker. And I'm just going to repeat the exact same thing on the back side once I glue this completely down. So I'm just following the thickness of the strips I made just so that they match up. Folding them up, cutting the edges off and then adding it. Like I said, any scallop trim, a thick lace with a scallop edge would look really cute doing this on this tree. It would give it a completely different look, make it a bit more vintage. You could try various things. You could try scalloped fabric. You could even make these with paper and card. I mean, it's your tree. You know how you're going to use them and they would look really cute. Even doing it with a hessian, the hessian I used is actually wax back to so sew, trimming it into scallops it wouldn't fray and it would make really cute to do the scallops on that kind of tree. Right, I'm just gluing this last piece on here and the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to glue my edges together. I'm just going to lift them up and run my glue gun along the very edge of where the tree sits and then I'm going to press the pieces together just the same way I did when I was first applying my first layer of felt. And what this does is this gives you a really neat edge to be able to trim off so it looks a bit more polished. I'm just working up the edge of the tree, making sure everything is nice and pushed together. And then I'm going to trim down that side of my tree. And you want it a little bit bigger than the original place where you cut your felt just so you're not cutting into the first layer and opening everything up again. And repeat it on the second side. Now 
Now you can let me know in the comments below if you actually prefer the videos where I am narrating to you. I'm not the best at it. I find it quite hard to do these narrations but I am getting better at it. And let me know if you prefer it this way or if you prefer when I make silent videos. Right, I'm just trimming the other side of that tree. And we are ready to start decorating. Now I'm just showing you here, you can still, even once you've trimmed up your tree, add more layers if you desire, but I'm kind of happy with the way it is. My daughter doesn't like things being too fussy, so this is probably enough little frilly bits for her. Okay, so on to the star at the top. Now there's lots of things you can put at the top of your tree. You could put a pom-pom, you could put custom bottom embellishments, you could put a wooden star, even stickers. But I am drawing out these little craft foam stars and cutting two of them out. And what I'll do is I'll cut this one out, draw around it and then cut my second one out. Then I'm just going to peel them and stick one at the very back of my tree and then overlap one on the front and stick the two pieces together because these are self-adhesive. You could do this with felt too and a hot glue gun. You would just have to glue one piece on the back first, run your hot glue over your star and then put the front piece on. I'm just trimming these to be the same size because I, run, uh, I drew around one, it was slightly bigger. Peeling it now, positioning it by my star, pressing down my tree onto that so it holds and then putting this second piece to match up, pressing them really firmly together so they hold in place and then trimming off any places that just peek from the back that's a little too big. If you use an embellishment you only really need to put one on the front. Okay next to the tinsel on your tree. I mean, a lot of people don't like adding tinsel to trees, so you could just go straight to adding buttons like I did on the hessian one. Or like me, you could cut strips like I did with the green one of the craft foam and drape them across. But I'm using sequins on this tree. This is just inexpensive craft sequins that come in a little ribbon here. I think this whole card was about £1.99 in Home Bargains. And I'm just going to figure out where I want it on the tree. I like the draping look so I'm going to glue it across at an angle. And work slowly when you're using your hot glue gun with sequins. If your house is as cold as mine in the winter it can cure really fast the glue gold so working either very quickly with your hot glue gun or taking a little bit of time helps more precision when you're adding your sequins. And I'm going to wrap this round to the other side. You don't need to decorate both sides like I said before. I go only so far with decorating both sides this little tree because I know my daughter is probably only going to put it on a shelf. But for some reason I decided to put sequins on the back too. Alright, I'm showing you here that you could use ribbon instead of sequins. That little blue and white one is actually from my friend Heather. And I used a ribbon bow or as instead of a star on that one. Just added my sequins up the tree wherever I want it. I mean this is your tree, you can do it absolutely whatever you want to it, you can customise it in any way. I think it would also be cute if you were using the green felt and then cut fake snow to sit at the top of your tree. That would be a cute little tree too. I mean there's so many possibilities with possibilities with these. I could probably make another 10 all completely different with the ideas that these little trees have given me. Okay so now the sequins are all in place and I think that's probably enough sparkle. My daughter is not a fan of sparkle so I am now opting on what decorations to use. Now you can cut out little craft foam circles like this to use as baubles or you could use the buttons like I'm going to do here. You could use stickers, you could use beads, you could use literally anything to decorate your tree. Pom-poms, brads, there's so many ways you could decorate this tree. Now as I said before, the colour scheme for this tree is a little bit odd because it's for my daughter's bedroom and she is decorating her Christmas tree in the new Pentatonix album colours. She has very strange tastes sometimes. So this tree has primary colours and black. I'm 
I'm just positioning all the buttons. This is where I stopped decorating both sides of the tree and decided just to decorate the front. And I'm going to glue all those buttons in place with my hot glue gun. And then I decided to add these little stars. I'm just going to cut the plastic off the back using some jewelry cut nippers. These are for cutting wire, so they cut this off no problem, just flush to the back. I only had four of those so I decided to use them up on this project because I've had them for a very long time and I always like to find ways to use materials that I've had lying around. So I'm gluing them on the tinsel and one on the star at the top just for added dimension. And I think they look pretty cute actually. I'm not gonna lie, I like how this tree turned out. Okay, so this tree is pretty much done apart from the base. I'm just picking off those glue strings that come from a hot glue gun. And I'm going to take our base. Now there's many ways you can colour your base. If you're going to paint your tree stand, then you probably should do it before you start with your base, like I did with this green one. But I'm only going to be doing the little pedestal part, so I don't need to worry about the actual tree trunk. And you can use Sharpie paint markers, but I'm using a permanent marker in black for her tree base because that is how she rolls. She likes black things and as this has got black in the tree, I figured it would probably be cute to have a little black stand. So I'm just colouring in the whole thing and it took surprisingly well considering it was just bare wood. The black marker took really well actually and dried immediately so the only parts that I got on my fingers is where I missed the stand and drew on myself which is normal for me. I'm always covered in some sort of craft or art medium. I'm putting a little tacky glue, the glue, little tacky glue in the base and sticking in the stick, wiping off the excess and we shall call that one done. All ready to go and stand on a shelf. Okay, as promised here is method two. Now I'm actually going to cut these in half because I want a much smaller tree and this one is going to be a dinner table setting size tree. I like the idea of doing little mini trees that then you could add someone's name to the base or just as a decoration across the tree. Cutting down my card and putting a hole through the center of my whole stack, minus one. The thicker the card, the easier this is because you need less of it to pile up. It would be really hard to get a knit a needle through a really thin card when it's all stacked like that. And then you're just going to glue all your pieces together, lining up that hole. I actually end up using the knit a needle in the card to line up the holes as I glue them down and it works out pretty well. I just stuck it in the hole and pushed the card down, lifted it up, glued the next one, pushed it down again. So once you've got your little base, you're going to cover it. Now you can do what I'm doing here, which is cover it in the self-adhesive craft foam, or you can use Mod Podge and glitter straight on the card, paint, fabric. You could Mod Podge and tissue paper it. I'm cutting out three little, sorry, two little cardboard trees here. I decided to only go for two, and this barbecue skewer, which is pretty gross because I've used it to mix paint. And this is just a much more simplified version with less materials. You're going to cut a little bit of a rectangle, slightly bigger than your base, so you have excess to trim off. This is the easiest way to cover something like this. Stick it on, cut off the excess. Then you're going to cut yourself a strip that is a bit wider than the edge of your little platform. I'm going to peel that and stick that on, lining the edge up with that bottom edge. Stick it all the way around. Trim off the excess where it meets the last, the first edge that you put on and then press it really well all the way around to make sure you've got good adhesion before trimming off that top edge. And you have given yourself a nice flat little place to then cut out another rectangle and stick the top on. And then once again just trim around that perfectly and that's you've got a perfectly covered little base that took a couple of minutes to make and looks really cute. And 
and then you're going to take your knitting needle and find that hole and just repuncture it where the stick goes. Now because the stick is kind of bogging, I decided rather than paint it or colour it, I'm going to use that same craft foam just to cover it. I'm just taking a little strip of the scrap, wrapping it around the stick, trimming off the excess where the two edges meet. And then to make sure it's adhered properly, I'm going to roll it on my desk with my fingers just to smooth it all in and get it nice and secure. Now I'm going to cut down my stick and measure it up against my tree to see how tall I want my tree to be. And I'm actually going to overlap that little pink bit there so that goes up inside the tree base. I'm going to glue the two pieces of my tree together. And because I'm not using that center piece of card, I'm going to make sure I glue right to the edges and use some clips to keep it together until the hot glue goes cold. I'm just showing you that you don't actually need that center piece with the channel cut out to do this if you don't have enough card. You can merely just stick them together and hold them until they cool down. Okay, so now to cover it in the felt, we're going for a little green tree this time. I've got a cold, so excuse my sniffing if you can hear it. I'm just taking off the clips here. Getting my green felt and figuring out how much I need. So I'm going to glue it straight onto my sheet of felt, leaving myself an ample excess. I'm just working out how much felt I need, leaving, like I said, enough excess that will be glued. And it's just easier this way to do it rather than cutting out triangles. I'll glue around the edges of my tree, and then on my tree also before I fold over that felt and smush all the edges down all the way around to get it nice and secure. And you want to make sure you really work those edges together and make them as flat as possible before you trim it off. You could do the bottom of the tree again but like I said I prefer it when it's open. I just think it looks a little bit cuter. And if you don't want to glue you can always sew around these trees like I did with the first green tree. Both ways look extremely cute. Okay so this time I'm going to be using some of these little miniature pom-poms and I'm just showing you you can use these to make the tinsel part of your tree. It would look extremely cute if you did it this way adding just one colour of pom-pom or you could use the micro pom-poms which are there. I don't have a colour that I want to use in these micro pom-poms but they look equally as cute on these little trees or you could use some of these brads that you get for paper crafts. You could just cut off the little metal at the back. These are just some options for decorating your tree but I'm going with the pom-poms and a little glitter foam you could cut out some decorations from your glitter foam and stick them all over your tree. I'm actually going to be using this heart as the top part of my tree instead of a star. This little tree is going to be in my craft room so pink and fluffy goes perfectly with the tree that I have in there. I'm just trimming out my little heart because it was a little bit the and needed some fine detailing. It looks cute now. I could stick it to my base like I'm showing you. There are so many ways to customize these. You could make them into a specific theme. You'd make cute little presents in a Christmas Eve box maybe with someone's name on and instead of putting a base you could actually add a loop to the top of these and hang them up as decorations. I'm adding my little pom-poms now. I decided to go for white. I decided to stick with the white and pink theme. And there's some more of that sequins I'm going to use as my tinsel. I'm just going to drape a little bit between my pom-poms and wrap it around my tree and then secure it at the top. So I only really glued that in two places because it's so small it's not going to sag or anything. Just trim off the excess. And then I want my heart at the top, but because it's adhesive on the back, I decided I was going to back it with some fluffy pom-poms. I'm just sticking three together to make them large enough for the heart. Then I'm going to glue that to the top of my tree. 
angle of the heart straight on the front. You're only going to see this tree from one side in my craft room. So that is all I need on this little tree. And then I found these little red heart buttons that I really liked and I think look nice with the pink. So I'm just finding a second one and I'm going to glue them on my tree for a little added detail. And hot glue is fine with gluing things to this tree. It's not like they're going to fall off. And if you're not touching them too much then they shouldn't fall off. And then I'm going to take that sequence and just go around the top edge of my box just to add some detail there and to make it look like it's more cohesive with the tree by carrying on that green sequin strip onto the base just going all the way around trim off the excess I'm just going to glue down the little straight edges there and neaten it up and then just like the other tree we take a little bit of tacky glue into the hole and insert the tree base stick into the hole and that should dry overnight and that is that little tree finished too and this is how my little squad of trees turned out I could have made so many more variations in design but I hope this was a simple craft for you to follow I hope you try it for yourself and don't forget to tag me if you do decide to try it the hashtag will be on screen decide to try it the hashtag will be on screen